All right, we are live. So uh, welcome everyone to another edition of Mandy's Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Daryl Ledwin. I'm the Canadian representative for Mandy.com. And I am very fortunate today to have the opportunity to speak with Kate Evans and Shakira Dowling, uh, a couple of casting directors from the UK who are fantastic. And I'm very much looking forward to having the discussion today uh, specifically about Zoom auditions and self-tapes. So uh, I guess we'll start. First of all, it says Rowena. That's not accurate. It is actually no. Kate. <laughs> uh, and Shakira is here. So uh, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes to introduce yourselves, if you don't mind. So we'll start with Shakira. You're on my top right. So we'll go there. Hello, everyone. I'm Shakira Dowling. I'm a casting director in London mostly working on feature films and some online content. Um, yeah, that's me. All right, great. And Kate? Hi, everyone. Um, I am Kate Evans, but I've got Rowena Pointer down the bottom there. Ro is casting director at Kate and Lou Casting. Um, my Zoom's being used for yoga, hence why I'm on this one. Um, I'm a casting director in London, and we mainly work on commercials and short films, uh, online content, and a lot of stills photography as well. And I know Shakira very well. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks so much, you guys. Uh, before we get really started, I want to ask, uh, Shakira, I'll start with you. Um, how have you been handling everything since the COVID crisis? Are you doing well? Is, is, I mean, obviously, things are different, but how have you coped? Well, to tell you the truth, the first couple of weeks were just a bit mayhem because everything was being cancelled and being put on hiatus and having to disappoint a lot of people, directors, actors, people who were doing their first ever, you know, film job, just constantly having to go through that, not knowing whether it was going on hiatus or whether it was postponed till next year and kind of it took a couple of weeks to settle down from that. Um, and then we got into our stride doing lots of Zoom things like this. Um, but things are starting to move again, which is great. The last couple of weeks has been fairly, you know, constant with things moving slowly, but it's getting there. Everyone's planning to shoot this summer is actually, you know, doing that legwork, which is really fantastic. So some of the projects I had before are coming back. That's good news. Yeah. Okay, what about you? Um, advertising stopped with a grinding halt when we went into lockdown, absolutely. Um, so I didn't even have to mop up on any jobs because it just stopped. You know, we couldn't shoot, we couldn't do anything. Um, and the last three weeks, it's just gone crazy with the advertising world. It really has. Um, interestingly, I keep thinking there's lots of creatives that have been sat at home for three months thinking of great ideas to advertise products. So I'm excited to go back to work. Um, it's, it's a bit of a shock, if I'm honest, going back to work. Uh, as the chat did, we've all done lots of Zooms with actors and we audition and things like that. Um, and now putting it all into practice. So all the castings I'm doing are on Zoom. Um, personally, I prefer Zoom than self-tape because I've got control over it and I can direct people. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I was, I've had a crazy, crazy day. I've been up very early this morning and I've got lots of jobs coming in and I'm juggling and um, really looking forward to going back to work in the office in central London next week. Really, um, it'd be nice to get out of the house. So yeah, and away from the dog and my husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. We're all just waiting for it to you know start to return to normal but it feels like it really has started yeah. moving in that direction yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's really good news i'm excited about that i think it's it's you know i want to say globally it's kind of going in the same direction but we'll just leave it at that shall we <laughs> um so it's interesting kate you you mentioned you like doing zoom auditions so i want to jump into this a little bit and discuss with you guys what you feel a, a good zoom audition is like from an actor's perspective, um, you know, there's the, the nerves that you have as an actor when you walk into a building and then you go into the, the studio, the waiting area, and then you walk into the room to do your audition. You, you know, you, you create this character as an actor of an auditionee, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's obviously shifted a lot with Zoom. So I'm curious to know um, how you would, I guess, 
tell actors to prepare for a Zoom audition? Because I feel like it's a lot different than an in-person audition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So can... Yeah, you can't beat a live audition. You know, you really can't. And it would be lovely to get back in the studio and audition people face to face. But at the moment, we can't do that. And that's fine. But at least the industry is up and running and casting directors have found a way around it. So, you know, from our point of view, we can still cast. Um, it's been interesting doing Zoom auditions. Obviously, I'm in control because I can hit pause and I can hit record. So as with any other casting, you know, we get the person in the room and, you know, have a quick chat, just to make sure they understand what's going on, what the character's about. Um, I send out a very detailed email with all the links on there to the script, to the part, what sort of direction I'm going to give them, if it's going to be played larger than life or very subtle, what I'm after. So wardrobe, everything I give details to. Um, and I, I'd say maybe 60% of Zoom casting that people I see are brilliant. There is a 30% of people that are just not prepared. You know, I've got mum in the background, the dishwasher going. <laughs> Animals and small children, that's fine by me. You can't do anything about that. But, yeah, people don't seem to be prepared or they're trying to do their audition on their phone. So the minute I say, can I see your hands, they're holding a phone. And I'm like, well, I need mm. to see your hands like that. And then they put the phone down. Or I've asked for them to, the recent one I did, I needed them to drink a glass of water quite a few of them didn't have a glass of water. So it was then a question of waiting while they went to the kitchen to get a glass of water and come back. So Zoom auditions for me, they do work, but actors need to get with it. They really do. Actors need to be prepared. So they are in a waiting room on Zoom and I bring them in to the audition room in effect. Um, but they need to be ready. You know, it, it, it's quite frustrating and Normally, depending on script, we would allow maybe 10, 15 minutes per audition. I'm allowing 20 minutes per audition now. And it's hard going. It really is. Um, it's interesting, but it is hard going from my point of view. And I think a lot of it to do with being in front of the screen so much. Yeah. I find it draining being in front of the screen. But now we're sort of looking at, I've been saying to clients recently, rather than using three hours for doing two characters, I actually need six hours. Because I need to have a break in between, you know, we all need to stretch our legs and get away from the screen. Um, but the footage is there, it's brilliant. I use a studio to upload my footage and all the forms and everything. And my clients are getting the same link and the same footage that they would get beforehand. So clients are loving it, absolutely loving it. Um, I just think actors just need to get with the program, you know. And I've had a lot of agents saying to me, particularly today, they can't make 10 o'clock in the morning. Can you see them at three? What are they doing? Because I've got to be honest, we're sort of still in lockdown here. You know, and also everyone's desperate for work. So therefore, you know what, guys, just make the effort, really, is sort of my advice. Um, so I think it could, could be the way forward with casting, maybe for a, a pre-casting or something like that. Um, because it's, I'm thinking about the environment people's carbon footprint, you know, getting on a train, the money they spend getting into London. There's all sorts of factors involved with that. So at the moment, Zoom's working well, but actors, guys, you really need to get with it. You really need to think about lighting. You need to think about your background. You need to be prepared and treat it like an audition. I'm sort of so shocked. This is, this is, to add to that as well. <laughs> Well, I'm going to interject if, if you don't mind, uh, Shakira, I'll get to you for sure. Um, I just wanted to, there's two things that I, I got from that, obviously being prepared for sure. So I know it's a different world when you're uh, auditioning from your own home. I'm certainly more comfortable in my own home. Uh, but on that side, I think the technical elements are very important to talk about. So it's things that maybe actors should really consider investing in, such as a tripod for their phone. Yeah. Um, and a backdrop of some sort that's going to, you know, eat shadow, for lack of a better term, um, and make sure that it's quiet and, and uh, you know, you have, if you have to have a reader, I'm assuming you have a, if there's a reader that you'd need, they'd also be on Zoom reading. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that all makes sense, but you'd want to have a quiet place for sure, uh, make sure that there's no added noise and so on. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting take. 
uh, on that. So yeah, sorry, Shakira, what, what are your thoughts on? I mean, I think my, my other thought on that to add to that is, you know, we give, as Kate said, really detailed instructions. We'll give instructions as to whether we need to see your full body. We'll give those instructions in advance. So read that and find that space where, you know, your camera can do a full body shot and not you know, you get till here and they're like, I've got nowhere else to go. I'm in a small room. And it, you know, it really doesn't matter if it's, you know, the garden at the end of the day, if we're asking you to do, you know, something which is physical and often enough it is, has an element of physical, then, you know, make that choice, but don't, don't restrict yourself because of your own environment, I think. Um, the other thought I had was, yes, about investing. I very rarely like to tell actors to put money into anything because we know that you're poor. Um, but you are not paying whatever, 10 pounds to get on the tube to come and see us. You're not going to walk into Pret and buy yourself a coffee and a sandwich because you don't have anywhere else to have lunch. So just think about that. It's it's about three auditions worth of money that you'll be spending on a backdrop and a tripod. Not very much at all. And it, I mean, I think it's, on it's Amazon, they, do, um, they got a tripod with a ring light on. And I think it's, you know, in the UK, it's sort of 15 pounds. So mm. it, 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 you've got the tripod with a ring light and your phone in the middle to record yourself. Mm. And yeah. I, I have spoken to several actors who are doing one-to-ones. And one girl, I was like, are you in the studio? And she went, no, I'm not. I'm in my bedroom. But <laughs> she had grey curtains behind her and she was well lit, you know, the noise and everything. She looked great. She really did look great. She'd done it so well. I was very, very impressed. So it's so it time to try, to try it out as well and try, you know, what it's like in the day. Try what it's like, especially because we're talking, we haven't talked about self-tapes. But again, sometimes you have a self-tape to do overnight the lighting is going to be different to 10 a.m. in the morning. But, you know, you've got time in lockdown to find those areas in your house that look better with, you know, when the light's hitting you from this side at this time of day um, and do those sort of little tests yourself. Sorry, that's my dog in the background. I'm going to close my <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, that's very good advice for sure. I think everybody should take some time. Uh, I'll be honest, as an actor, I just use a blanket as a backdrop, but I put it up really high so nobody can tell it's a blanket, but it eats light. And I'm very happy with that. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's interesting with the Zoom thing. Obviously, this is going to be something that's going to be happening with all casting directors, I think, globally, uh, moving into sort of Zoom auditioning, uh, digital auditions, if I can call them that. Um, it's interesting to understand the direction and the redirection. And, you know, when you're in the room, there's, uh, there's physicality that comes into play. But when you're on a platform like this, I don't think it's going to be, it's not going to resonate as well. So how do you redirect people when you're in a Zoom audition versus an in-room audition? Or is it similar? For me, it's very similar, actually. I mean, obviously, I would have you... You, if you were auditioning, Daryl, you'd be pinned, wouldn't you? I wouldn't be seeing um, Kate or myself. So we'd see us, we'd see you as we would on the television, just a smaller version because it's our computer screen. So the direction you're getting is is as though I'm seeing you through the lens. I think what the thing the difference with Zoom is the lack of energy that we give to each other mm -hmm. because it's virtual. In a in a castle studio it is very easy to pick up on people's energy and you can tell if they're nervous, you can tell if they're feeling uncomfortable. So I find that difficult on Zoom to gauge that with people, to feel, why well, are they nervous or are they just not prepared? Or So I, I miss the energy side of it, but I agree with Shaq. It's very, you know, it is similar. And the fact that we can direct you, whereas self-tape, we're sort of relying on, on you directing yourself. Yeah. Hence why I prefer yeah. Zoom than I do self-tape. <laughs> but also, it's nice to get, you know, Shakira and I both know, we can get the best performance out of someone. We really right. can. So yeah. being able to talk one-to-one -one with them, we know the little, or oh, maybe that line, you just emphasised it too much. You need to bring that down. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can give feedback and we can go again. We can go again, you know, three or four times. And, you know, Shakira and our job is to get the best out of actors, yeah. you know, 
actors make us look good. You guys forget that. We love good actors in the room. We want you to do well because it looks good in front of our clients. And actually, you know what um, the difference that, you know, the advantage you've got on Zoom is that we can basically delete that terrible take that you were really nervous about, which if you were in the room and the client was there, they would have seen the, that one as well. So actually you're in a, in a better position in a way because we'll always, you know, take the best two and send those ones off. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I say it's interesting. You know, I, I've been in a lot of these Zoom type of calls as well with a lot of casting directors, and I think the biggest message to send to actors is that you guys are really rooting for us to succeed. Um, our success is your success, right? Yeah. Um, so I think anytime we can reinforce that, it's a very good thing to do. So yeah, I appreciate you both. Thank you. Um, I'd like to move on now to self taping. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, you said you're not necessarily a huge fan because you don't get to control the direction that the actors choose. Um, I think actors love to have that control a little bit. I think it's, uh, you know, we have the opportunity to analyze a script and kind of develop a character from what we read. And so that's really important. Obviously on the creative side as an actor, you wanna be able to sink your teeth into something. So I think there's a lot of joy from an actor's perspective in creating and developing that character. Um, but I wanted to get your perspective on. I use self tape yes. a lot and I always have done pre COVID. We were all, all the films that we've worked on in the last two years. I think we, we had self tapes in the first instance. So we're really used to giving good direction on email as to what we're, we're wanting, giving really succinct uh, character breakdowns. Um, of course, some people are great at self-taping and some people aren't. And and I mean, I'm. It's, it's not always about the sound quality and the lighting, and it, it's about whether you feel confident doing, you know, that with the material, not just with the material, with the sort of medium, really. Okay. Yeah, self-tape uh, from a commercial's point of view is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And as, as Shaq says, you know, we give very detailed breakdowns on characters and, you know, levels of performance. Um, my favourite one on commercials is that people will always, if you're um, casting for a supermarket, they'll have a product from that supermarket or the carrier bag. And it's like, not really helping and it's quite cringy, if I'm honest. So, um I think for some some characters, absolutely self-tape works. It really does. And for the first round, like Shakira said, absolutely the first round castings on films and things is definitely the way forward. And with a film, you've got more meat on the bones, in effect. You've got yeah. more of a more script. You've got more dialogue there. You can really get yourself into it. I think with commercials, um, it's difficult. Um, most people come into commercial castings and overact it. They really do. Because they think that we should be, oh, Yes, this is brilliant. Da, 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 da. And it's not really what we're after. Um, I know that commercials in Canada and America are very different from the UK. We mm -hmm. tend to have like a mini TV series going on in some of our commercials. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's slightly different. And I agree with anything that I cast. I'm always happy for the actor to show me their take first because you get a different perspective and you think, wow, I'm not seeing anybody play it like that. or the way they said a certain line that's really interesting i didn't think that character could go that way but it works with commercials you know you're talking of 30 seconds most of the time you're not on screen the product's more important than you and this right. feeling yeah. i've been to drama school and i've trained to be an actor most of my like my comments in casting studios is can you just be yourself if i'm honest commercials are very uh, you know we need to relate to every man in the country, you know, every woman in the country. So it's it's sort of stripping away your acting and going back to just being yourself. I don't need you to prance across the room when I've asked you to walk across the room. You know, it's, right. I know you're trying to show off your skills to me and I get it, you're all very talented. But with commercials, you end up stripping it all away. So less is definitely more from my point of view with advertising. Well, yeah, with commercials, a lot of the time it is very much you are chosen to come into the room or to cast for your looks more than anything else. Uh, we are looking for 
mum type with two. And there's also there's an act to underplaying something. Mm. I've had actors sort of stood there for 30 seconds and I'm just telling them emotions. And some people were like scared. They're like, oh. I'm like, no, I just want a little bit of fear there. You know, my best one is um, you're thinking and they all go. <laughs> and it's like, we don't think like that. We really don't. It is a question of, am I going to have chicken or beef for dinner? You know, it's very small. So with self-tape, I spend an awful lot of time admin side of things, going back to part, going back to actors and actresses and saying, look, I've got to be honest, that was really bad. This is not what we wanted. You didn't really read direction. You just gave us what you thought we wanted mm. um, and getting them to do it again. So from a casting director's point of view, self-tape is a lot more admin side of it for me. You know, it's chasing actors up and saying, or actors who just don't send them in. I didn't have time. You've had three days. Really? In three days, you can't do, you know, a 90-second self-tape for me. But in the same breath, I have had um, somebody do a self-tape in a toilet for me who was on a shoot, and they got the job. I've had the uh, same, literally. I have had the same, literally yeah. in between takes, do yeah. a self-tape and got the job. Yeah. And, yeah, and not, said, we're not, yeah, we're not I'm really sorry that was so rushed. I, I can do it again tonight about 10 o'clock if you need me to. And it's like, nope, we want you to fly yeah. out on Monday. <laughs> yeah, we're not saying go to the toilet and self-tape, though. <laughs> that, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to mention that we're not condoning that you do your self-tape no. toilet. Yeah, no, that would not be great. Um, I so there's a couple, couple of... smile when you ask them sometimes, you know, I get you on the shoot, but I would push it. If that person's right for the job, I'll push it and say, please, can they do it in the lunch break or in the dream take, you know? Right. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to touch on. So you had mentioned, um, you know, for self-tape, somebody will bring something that you hadn't necessarily thought of and you say, oh, I quite like that. Mm. Um, so a question that comes up a lot is, listen, I, I see what you've given me and I interpret it this way. But when I read it, I interpreted it this way. Can I send you both versions? So this is, um, you know, to your point, it's an administrative task and there's a lot of tape to go through. Um, are you open to that or how do you want that to be kind of bridged if somebody does have a second tape? Um, I think it's one of those things where you have to be very careful. You can't do it every time. I'll send two so I have double the chance for every single self tape you're doing because like you said, it just makes more work for us. Um, I would always say, send it to your agent and say, which one do you think is the best to send? I mean, it's their job to direct you and you know to, to give you that opinion. And if your agent says, actually, they're both equally good, but they're so different, let's send them both. Then, you know, that's cool. There's someone else's, you know, you put someone else's brain in there. And actually, if they think they're both equally creative and very good, then they will send them both. But I wouldn't want, actors to think that they should send two for everything right i think with film it's, it's slightly different and then you're doing more on that self-tape with commercials it can literally be i'm after 20 seconds it really mm. is walk past the camera and look at the camera and move on um so if you can walk past the camera in several different ways for me great but <laughs> uh, in total you know for a commercial i'm really only looking at two minutes maximum so you can do several in that that's fine right. but you know, I, I'm sure Sha Sha Shakira will agree, is that we do get a sense the minute you start watching someone. You do. You just think, yeah, yeah, they've got it. There's something about them. They're there. Or, or they've not, if you've not hit the mark, then I would always go back and say, can we, can we try again? Can we just give a bit more? And then there's just some people that are just knows. You know, it's, they're not right for that part. It's as simple as that. So, um, yeah, it, it's, your agent's the one, I agree with Shakira, yeah. your agent's the one to give you that guidance and say, yeah, go for it, or no, let's just stick with the one take. Yeah. Good advice. Um, so I guess the, the message here is if you don't have an agent, don't submit multiple things, just pick one that you love. Well, ask an actor friend, you know, there's always someone around who can give you an yeah. opinion, you know, absolutely, just ask someone else in the industry, your friends, or, you know, push comes to shove, even your mum. You know, she. There is always one that will stand out in the self tape. One scene that will you nailed it in. So if yeah. your mom says it's bad, probably don't submit it. Really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. your mom will always say it's good, but yeah. she can't yeah. say they're all good as equally as good. You right. can't get her off off, off the fence there. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, so I wanted to talk more about the commercial side of it. Um, you know, a lot of commercials are silent on camera. So a lot of it is developed around physicality. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I have, uh, my framing is not necessarily great for self tape right now, but you know, I, I think people want to have a bit of a techno technology understanding of where their frames should be. Um, so if you can give some insight onto that, I think that would be wonderful. Um, with my brief um, for self tapes, and I do put if I want a mid shot or I want a close up or I need a full length. Um, I have a job on this week and it's for a medical product and it is about body shape because it's about a medical condition and a drug that can help. So 100% I need that full length in all, all of the tapes. Um, I give detailed instructions um, as to what shot. Um, and again, with Zoom, I suppose the easiest thing is to say, you're, you're too close, I need a mid shot. So can you just reposition the camera for me? Um, again, with self tape. If, I think the thing is, if you don't understand, ask your agent or go back to the casting director. So I'm not actually quite clear what you meant by this. Do you mean, you know, three quarter, uh, three quarter profile? And some people get confused by that. And it's like, well, it's not profile and it's not straight on, it's three quarters. But, you know, we, as we said, we want you to do well. So if you ask a question and you nail it from asking the question, your performance can be better. Because we can tell when you're doing something and you're not sure of what you're doing. Because there's an uneasiness there. And it's like, you know, you're not comfortable in the role. You're not, you're thinking about the way you're walking or where the camera is rather than what you're actually doing. So always ask. If it's really not clear, always, always ask. Um, and framing, as Shakira said earlier, I think you have to, it's within our means. I did a job last week and they wanted some, somebody somersaulting out of bed. Now, not everyone's got the room in their house to do it, but we took YouTube footage, any footage they wanted to show us of them somersaulting, and we didn't need them in their bed. I have to admit, you know, we got a few guys that we had them getting, yeah, they were in their beds and they were like, they set up their whole bedroom, it looked amazing. But in that instance, we didn't actually ask them to do that. We, it was more of a, you know, make sure we get a full length in and make sure we can see some body movement. Yeah. But we always ask for extra footage because it's not always possible. People live in all sorts of places, you know. We're not always lucky to have gardens. We're not always lucky to have the space to do it. So I think within reason, you know, I think the question to do is, is to go back and ask. If you're unsure about anything, um, do ask straight away. And sometimes we do also even just ask for a full body still shots, you know, on and uh, making sure we get all the angles that we want. So we will give instruction. Can we have, you know, a photo of you? I don't know, you know, full length, but in something black and tight so we can see what your what your body shape is. Mm -hmm. Especially Maybe you don't now, have a black background when you're wearing the, that, right? The costume department aren't really going to be able to do a fitting possibly they might literally have to just bring a few outfits you know there's a lot of different rules that we have to kind of think about as well so yeah often enough we'll just ask for backup mm -hmm. right yeah that's really good uh i think uh, you know i'm going back a ways now but uh, it used to be just a slate shot on the front and it was a full body and then you do your you know your your framing for whatever the job requires so Daryl, you did have a good point there, though, about um, background. So if you've got mm -hmm. a white shirt on, please don't have a white background because it just looks like a moving head. Um, yeah. I always find light grey backgrounds are good, just gives a bit of contrast going on. But do think about that pattern oh, shirt. Right. That's, yeah. No, no. God, our eyes go like that on camera. It's, yeah. So, yeah, think about what you're wearing in contrast with your background. Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to ask about wardrobe specifically. I mean, uh, obviously there's, you know, if you have an audition for a period piece, sometimes that's a little bit more challenging. I certainly don't have the costumes for that type of stuff. So, you know, if it is an audition for a period piece, what do you recommend somebody wear? Obviously something that is not going to match the background, but what should they I wear? always think a very simple um, neckline for whatever you're wearing. I hate boys coming in with hoodies. It just crunches around here and you lose people's necks and yeah I would always say as simple a neckline as possible no matter what you're auditioning for sometimes it's ruffles do you know what I mean it does and it gets mixed with the hair if it's a color that's similar to the girl's hair and you're like I just need to see some clean lines really and I think with something if it's a period piece then girls can just make their hair slightly period looking you don't need to come in. in it doesn't yeah. take 
match at all. And guys, you know, you, can, you know, side parting, slick it down, slick it back, you know. So it's a hint of that character. Mm -hmm. um, I have had people turn up in pirate costumes before. The other thing <laughs> is our clients want to see a blank canvas. So yeah, if right. you make yourself into that character, you can actually be quite off-putting because yep. we don't want to see all of that. You know, the stylist, the creatives, the director, we've all got an input on how that character will look. So by you preempting it, it's not helping us. I think mm -hmm. just a hint, a hint, you know, you don't have to have a come in with a parrot on your shoulder for a pirate, you know, you can do it in a different way. Maybe drink rum. No, don't drink rum. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think um, exactly yeah. that. Like when you're thinking about different um, characters, you know, maybe a lipstick color or a bigger earring, and that's that's just enough. That's literally just enough to give you a hint of something, but nothing distracting. No, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to. <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to ask about uh, readers for self tape. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of different uh, things said. Sometimes casting directors don't care what the reader is. Some want them to be very quiet and kind of in the background. Uh, and some want them to be actors acting the part off camera, obviously, uh, and maybe in a quieter uh, voice, but acting so that the person in front of the camera has something to feed off of. So do you have any preference in that space or, or what do you suggest and advise in that area? Well, for film, for drama, let's go for drama. Acting is very much reacting. So if you have got some recorded voice on your phone where you've recorded all the lines and you're pressing the button every time it's their turn to talk and you've put on a silly voice and you've, you know, you're hearing yourself, there's no reacting happening at all, not to you. Do you know what I mean? So I would mm -hmm. say it doesn't really matter who that person is, but they, they have to be enough that you have something to react. I think an eye line is always really important as well for me. Um, even just talking to you, you know, I'm looking, maybe I'm not looking in the camera, which is probably where right, I right. should be, but I'm looking at your eyes when I'm talking. Right. Um, without that, I've got nothing to bounce off and I feel exactly that. Actors need yeah. something to bounce off. In terms of quiet voice, well, don't be upstaged by your reader, that's for sure. Right. No, ab <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I agree with Shaq. You know, it is good to have someone there and the eye line's always important. Um, I did a Zoom call last week, uh, self-tape actually, and one girl was looking over there and we all ended up thinking, what is she looking at? What is over there? And as it turned out, when I gave feedback, she was looking at a script. So, you know, you can have the script just under the camera, just by the camera, you know, somewhere close to the camera. Um, that mm -hmm. is quite off-putting if the eye line's mm. gone somewhere else. You know, you think, wow, what's going on? Um, so, I think, you know, I, I've had people's mums reading, again, in a quiet yeah. voice. It's just a reaction. It's someone to give that reaction and then that feeling to. Right. Um, I want to talk about eye lines, since you brought it up. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting, at least in North America, I think a lot of us have been taught not to look down the barrel. Yeah. Um, and so it's very different when you, you know, have a Zoom audition. Obviously, I'm looking at, again, both of you on my screen. Um, and when I self-tape, I never look down the barrel either. But how do you manage that in a, in a Zoom audition? I'm curious about that. Like, do, do, do you have to tell people not to look down the barrel? Is it something that's... I mean, it is actually quite hard to look down the barrel if you're looking from your phone. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even see my phone. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. I'm actually looking down the barrel. <laughs> it is actually quite hard to actually get right down the barrel because it's not a huge camera in a studio, is it? <laughs> right. Um, some, some things I do need to be straight onto camera, which I'll tell people. Eye line straight to camera. So again, if it's a script, it just needs to be as close to the camera as possible. Um, I tend to give direction on eyeline as well. Okay. Maybe it's me. Yeah, I guess everything, but yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. It gets more difficult, obviously, the more characters are in a particular script. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have you know three characters, uh, any advice on that? I, I'll share what I used to do: is I'd put tape on the wall on the other side and then measure my eye lines and say like, okay, that's Kate, that's Shakira, so that's how I'm going to have this conversation. Yeah. You know. Um, so if you guys have any advice, I think that really works as long as the, um, 
wherever you place those people, the eyes are level with where your camera is. So if it's there or there, as opposed to up or down, otherwise we're seeing up your nose or you know, on your chin, on your forehead, not seeing your actual eyes. And it is in the eyes. Yeah, and I think with uh, mobile phone castings, we do, you know, advertising mobile phones, I will demonstrate, um, it's cheating it. Yeah. So you cheat it so it's like that, so I can see your face. A lot of people do this, and a lot of people, we all do it naturally. When you look at a phone, you put your head down, and I'm missing everything. So, it, you know, it's cheating it so we can see your face and your expressions and your reaction to what's going on on your phone. Um it's, it's difficult, isn't it? It just depends. I mean, with commercials, it depends on product. It depends what's going on in the ad. Um, I mean, generally, it's slightly off camera, isn't it? Normally, yeah. we do off just camera. slightly off camera is yeah. what I yeah. always yeah. think. Yeah. But do I think, guys? I've had recently. Um, I've said to people, "Can you show my pro? You should give me your profiles." So they did profile, and then they gave me the back of their head. <laughs> Wow, okay, so it'd be better if you gave me your profile that side, looked at camera, and then that side, I don't really need to see the back of your head in between. So, and it or the camera every time. Lots of actors that I've said, okay, you're stacking shelves, and instead of stacking the shelves in front of me, they turn yeah, around. They turn. Yeah. Yes, I've had that before. Yeah, or in a car. They look at someone. Here, if you're not if you're not going to do it in front, do it here. Yeah, or in a car. Or oh, someone's going past in the car. You know, you look to see what they're doing, and they do that. And it's like, <laughs> well, why can't the car be coming that way so I can see you? I mean, it, you do. You, you know, we want to see your face. That's the most important part. We're after that expression and that little moment that you get it. So um, that's a that's a very valuable tip, actually, to put the action in front of you at all times always. when you're self taping, right? Yeah, yeah. always. Yeah. And also, if you're referencing children, children aren't six inches tall. You know, <laughs> they're not down there on the floor. Also, people generally aren't eight foot tall. So, you know, just think about the height of a person or a child if you're talking to them. It, the children won't get to me every time. <laughs> well, that's fine. Um, I wanted to ask this question. I think, you know, I'm sitting right now. I don't know if you could tell. I'm pretty yeah. relaxed. Um, do you recommend standing i always say stand for most auditions because you're generally standing in the room but there yeah. are times especially in the commercial world where you are going to be seated for things mm -hmm. so any recommendations or is that going to be something in the breakdown as well that you would post it's something that i find if we're in a casting suite and you have to sit down often enough in casting suites you have these seats that kind of are a little bit like a bucket and actors do this they slump into them mm -hmm. so you know sit on the edge of the seat sit yourself up tall remember where you are remember who you are are you grounded are you a slumpy type of person you know make sure your posture is and similar to your character because often enough they're fold out seats in every casting suite they're not the best seats to be sitting in <laughs> At least at home, if you're doing a Zoom one, you can actually use your, you know, your best comfortable seat. But again, I have seen Zoom auditions where the back of the chair comes here and it looks a little, oh, actually like Kate. Kate, I can see on one shoulder. <laughs> see, you've got that. Yeah, so you can see these people with these square sort of shoulder things behind them. Um, all of that stuff makes such a difference. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if you could see the other side of my dining room, how much stuff I've just shoved over there out of camera <laughs> shot. <laughs> we all do it, you know. Oh, yeah. 100%. I live in the cleanest environment in the world. <laughs> just, really? just don't look that way and don't look that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's great. Uh, I wanted to ask, I'm going to go back to Zoom for a second. Um, you know, when you're doing a Zoom audition, I mean, you, you want to have a backdrop. You want to have all the same sort of things that you'd have as if you were doing a self-tape. Uh, I would probably recommend standing for that. Uh, do you want people to walk into the room, as it were? Or do you want them to already be there when you admit them? Um, unless the action is walking into a room, in which case we would send you that instruction. Um, walking across the room. There's often enough for commercials that we're literally looking for you to walk across the room, yeah. <laughs> glance yeah. at something as you walk by. <laughs> it's usually as simple as that. So yeah, if there's instruction about walking and coming in, then do so. But I would say generally, 
it will tell you in the breakdown what we're actually after. It's it's all about reading the instructions properly, even about how we want the tape sent if it's a self tape. The amount of times it's like, did you even read what we spent two hours writing? And it is a little bit tedious when the 17th self tape comes in, in the wrong format, to the wrong email address, with the I don't. Right. I've got a yeah. big of self tapes, and it's annoying me up. Why do you not label your self tapes? It says it in our instructions. Put your name, put the character name, and yeah. the project name. Yeah. Yeah. Dot M O V. It's quite simple. <laughs> but yes, we we've got six characters we're casting, and we're ending up with fifteen self tapes per character. I've got to be honest. If I get one in that's not labelled, I just delete it. I am not interested. This is the actor's job to be professional on this side. We do not have time to, to sometimes as well, you can't always hear the person when they do their ident. So we're all there thinking, who was that? What did they say their name was? And we go yeah. back through. And, and they're looking at Spotlight and you look, oh, you're looking at Matt. Yeah. Yeah. to match up. Does yeah. that look like Daryl? Yeah. Could be Daryl. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's Daryl. Okay, let's just see. Did we put him up for that character? Yeah, we set him those sides. And we don't need to be investigators. We've got enough work on our hands. I mean, there have literally been times where we're casting three films and we're getting self tapes in for about 17 characters yeah. all on the same day. And if those self tapes don't have your name, the character name and the project name on the label, then it goes into a do we have time to organize who the hell those people are? And it's also important, this is about you guys. This is mm. your self tape you spent a lot of time and energy doing. At oh. least label it with your name. I think yeah. it's just crazy when people don't label things. I just find it unbelievable. It is about you. It's like when you do your ident. You know, we want to know your name. It's about you. This is the first thing our clients are going to see. And again, with the self tape, the first thing they see is a labeled self tape. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that is one of my biggest bugbears is I'm not labeling things. I'm just like I can't be bothered. You can't and be bothered. Funnily to enough, it. actually, sometimes you might have taped for something and we remember you for another job and we just want to just yeah. search our you know computer, Daryl and and see what comes up and it should immediately bring up everything you've taped up for. Yeah. And then we can go, oh, I might show the director this one before we decided to bring him in or decide to see what he thinks about him. So yeah. the message here is name your self-tapes yeah. and slate, slate properly and loudly enough so that people can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask about this. So obviously I'm wearing headphones. You guys aren't. Um, I do this to try to mitigate any background noise and to keep me focused. But I'm, I'm guessing you wouldn't want to see that in a self-tape or in a Zoom call. Um, no. So is feedback ever an issue? Do you ever get any, like you hear yourself when you're talking to somebody in a Zoom audition? No. no. Oh, great. Hooray for Zoom. We're plugging in Zoom now. Um, <laughs> no, that's good. And what uh, we I wanted to get, obviously, is bad internet. And if there's one person who's got bad internet, it can be really frustrating. It happened to me the other day on Zoom auditions. Um, she hadn't checked her equipment. The girl did her, her, she didn't know how to turn on the sound. The sound wasn't working. I mean, and it was like, we kept putting her back in the waiting room, asking her to check. And, you know, my assistant was organizing the waiting room and it was just, it, it took ages for this girl to figure it all out. So again, you know, you're sent those instructions on how Zoom works if you've not used it before. Make sure you do a test with somebody, yeah. <laughs> anyone, your friend, your flatmate, your brother. <laughs> uh, I've got, I'm going to kind of run into the Facebook questions, some of the things that people have said. So some of our viewers, which is excellent. Thank you, everybody, for submitting your questions. I'm obviously not going to get to all of them, but I'm going to try to get to a few. Um, so one of the questions, when you don't have a reader for a scene that you're auditioning for, uh, and if the audition is sent the night before, this is a situation, holy. Uh, the audition is sent to you the night before and you don't have a reader, uh, what do you want people to do in that case? I don't, I, again, I don't think this is a common thing that happens. Generally, we get, you know. That's uh, when you pull your mum or whoever yeah, okay. <laughs> around. You get them on 
Skype on the computer, you put your ca your camera phone kind of close to where the Skype is, and you read with her. Good. I mean, Good. There's always someone. There you go. I was going to say, Shaq, there's always someone, isn't there? That there's will... someone. I mean, it could yeah. be your daughter's friend. It doesn't really matter to us who it is. But, I mean, um, worst but... comes to the worst. I mean, leave a beat as if you're listening. Yeah. But the difficulty is, as actors, you're listening to no one. Again, you know, what Shakira said earlier, it's getting that reaction, your human reaction or that character's reaction to somebody else. So, I mean, that is if push comes to shove, but I've got to be honest. You can find let's, someone somewhere. <laughs> yeah, let's try not to do that. I, I mean, yes, we are. We are we're unlikely the... to get the job for doing that, I'd say. <laughs> and I mean, we are all very connected uh, digitally. If you're getting an audition, obviously you got the email, so you have internet, presumably, so you can probably Skype in somebody or yeah. use whatever platform. So awesome. That's good, good advice. Um, oh, I wanted to... What did I want to ask about that specifically? It doesn't matter. I'll move on. Um, when uh, my agent uses self tapes to intro, oh, if I can't, if I don't have a demo reel, uh, is it okay to just record myself doing monologues and putting that on my profile as something? Because from for actors, it's sometimes very difficult to a get footage, uh, b compile it all into a really solid reel, um, and so there's a lot of actors, obviously on on Mandy who want to get a reel and are building their profile to the point where they can create a really good reel. In the meantime, is that something that is sufficient for you? Do, you? do you take a look at profiles and look at reels and look at monologues that somebody might put up? Yeah. Lockdown monologues we've been doing in London. Yeah. You know, this is a prime opportunity. And I've always, I, you know, the last few months I've been saying to actors, you know, I've gone from 200 emails a day down to five right now so I do have the time to watch things um but you know only email me if you've got something to tell me you know you've got a new show reel you've got new headshots you're in a play tell me something you know hi I'm an actor my name's John it's not really doing it for me and also you, you know during lockdown period I said to everyone get on the internet look at our websites I'm more likely to read your email if you bother to look at my website and are complimenting me. Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> oh, okay, I love that commercial you did. I'm going to read that whole email. But the round robin to every casting director telling me nothing at all. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone off subject a bit here, but monologues, um, I think, yeah, it gives. I, I saw a guy recently actually, and I did a one to one with him, and he went off and did three short monologues. He was unrecognisable in each one as a different character. So he changed his hair, changed his jumper. He'd done things to go into character for those three short monologues. And it blew me away. It really did. He really did it well. So I think, you know, with actors and actresses, you've really had the time recently to do this. And footage is better than no footage. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm happy watching the monologue. It'd be great if you could get two under three minutes on there. So just give us a different take. Or if you're from, I don't know, whether you're New York or Manchester, you know, do an RP, a standard accent for us. But if you can do a very good Manchester accent or LA accent or New York accent, do that as well. You know, do two different models and show off your skills. Um, the only thing I would say is keep it short. My attention span's really not very long, particularly when I'm busy. <laughs> That's Jack? fair. Um, yeah, I no, I think that they don't like monologues. <laughs> so I'm going to just say the, the opposite of what Kate said. In terms of showreel, I want to see people walking and talking. And um, yeah, so I'd rather just something really short and sweet, if that. But I always find monologues feel a little bit like they're on stage, a little bit like a play. I would rather people. Um, just find a friend and do a scene and record it as though they're actually doing the film themselves. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I, I it's think not it's that hard to edit. Monologues are <laughs> flat sometimes, Shaq, can't they? We're just like, really? So yeah, maybe something a bit different, you know, like Shaq said, a scene or something, just to change it up, you know? Yeah. Something. Monologues are just, it just feels flat. It does feel too stagey for my liking. Um, and really, I mean, if you're casting commercials, you want to see what someone looks like physically, that we want to see how the way they move, um, how tall, skinny, whatever their, you know, their body 
shape is. Um, but for film, you want to see them walking and talking and immediately you get a sense of whether they're natural or not. Yeah. Right. So show reel is ultimately important to get. It's something that every actor should aspire to definitely. ultimately have on their profile. I, I, yeah, I think at some point you're going to need one, definitely. Sure. I think if you're starting out, yes, put a monologue on there, but change it up as quickly as you can into actual footage of real jobs. Short, uh, short films are a good way of getting, mm. uh, getting the show reel together. You know, there's lots of film schools out there, lots of budding writers, directors. You know, do some short films. You can get some great scenes out of short films. Absolutely. Uh, I think some of the challenge is getting the footage. But anyway, I digress. I won't get into that. Um, uh, what, are the, what other things are coming up here? Oh, uh, do you feel like with, based on everything that's happened in this COVID world that we're now in, um, mm -hmm. do you feel like there's going to be more opportunities for people because they can audition via Zoom and can audition via self tape more so now than they could before? Or do you think it's going to be relatively the same people that submit or what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. I mean, I think we'll be seeing more people per role because we would generally have like four hours to cast, for example, in a studio and studio space is expensive, as I'm sure you know. Um, whereas self tape, we would just add in a f an extra few so we might normally see let's say 12 people for a role but actually we're now sending out 22 self tapes um what i do don't you really know how to answer that question if i'm honest it, it depends on shooting doesn't it really it depends what's up and running i mean yeah theaters at the moment in the uk are not going to be opening in the near future so we're sort of as casting directors were overwhelmed because there's probably lots of people that are, could be in the West End or long plays and you know long runs and things. So we've got sort of a good a good choice in front of us. Um, I, it's a difficult one because, as we know in the UK, you know one of the cities has been locked down again here with the second wave. So you know it's it's all dependent on this um, disease whatever it's called, COVID. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, in, uh, yeah, I don't know how to answer that question, if I'm honest, but I don't know. No worries. We'll just move on. How about that? Yeah. I think we here. just don't know, do we? We don't know how yeah. fast things will go back to normal. I yeah. think in terms of if that question was, are we see, going to see more people per role, then I'd say yes. But are we going to see mm -hmm. more roles? We don't know. We don't know. I don't, I don't think I was asking for more roles. I just think, to your point, yeah, it's more people are going to have the uh, opportunity to audition because you know for for you guys maybe they don't live in London proper and so they have to travel in and there's cost of travel and there's cost of parking or whatever it is so all that stuff just is certainly a, a, a much more economical answer for actors yeah um, and yeah. so I, I think if you live in outlying areas you have more of an opportunity now to present yourself to people who you, and to you casting directors maybe you've not seen these people because they haven't had the opportunity to come and audition in front of you before. So uh, I think where I was going is I think you're gonna see a lot more talent now, new talent that you haven't seen necessarily before. So I think that's an exciting time for me. Um, I wanted to jump into the theater thing now too, because I, uh, I mean, I'm very sad obviously about theater. Uh, they're gonna have some real pains moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, as an actor, I, I think a lot of us you know, send invitations to casting directors to come and see us performing in various productions. Um, and so when you're sourcing new talent, I'm sure you guys get a lot of invitations to a lot of different things and you try to go when you can, I'm sure. Um, but how are you going to kind of find talent now that you won't be able to do that? Is it going to be yeah. Uh, well, I think there's a lot of online showcases. So all the new grad stuff has gone online. And actually, I've seen more new grad shows this year than I've ever seen, because normally they're in the diary, they're lunchtime in Soho, and I'm meant to run in and run out and be able to cope with all of that and doing a full day's work. Um, and I tend to be missing at least half of them, whereas now they're all online. It's mm. actually really easy to watch them yeah. all. Yeah. And it's very, again, it's similarly to anything, you know, if you see someone who's talented, that their talent shines through, whether it's a Skype audition, a Zoom audition, a self tape. So I think those people are still getting the same opportunities. The worry is that, you know, 
agents will be taking on new grads with not knowing whether there's work for them this year. Mm. You know? mm. I, I agree with Shakira, the online world of casting and theatre is opening up. Uh, the National Theatre is streaming every Thursday night. They're doing one of the plays, they're streaming that, which is great. So people are still getting to see these shows. Um, I mean, we, as casting directors, we search the planet high and low to find the right person. Yeah. Instagram, so, TikTok, I mean, every we do yeah. actually search everywhere. Even oh chasing people down the platform on trains. It's yes. Home, shouting, waving. <laughs> oh! I think if there's talent out there, we do sniff it out. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. We, we've been scouting forever, haven't we, Kate? I mean, that's pretty much what we love to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think as casting directors, we will always find new talent. By hook or by crook, we will. That, that's our job, um, mm -hmm. to discover new talent. I mean, yes, theatres are great places to find it, but I think, you know, we're all learning to adapt to new ways, and this is, you know, a new way. We just find the, the showcases. I mean, the four third-year students of drama schools who are all about to have their end-of-year showcases and the agents and casting directors were coming. I mean, it's just awful for them. Oh, but really they've got around it and they do online. So, you know, I don't feel we're missing out. I think we're missing out from a culture point of view on theatre. Yeah. I, I I really enjoy going to theatre and I have missed that. Yeah. There's nothing like live entertainment. There really no. is. I, I no. agree. Live music and right. live theatre, I have yeah. missed. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best. There's nothing better. Um, all right, I want to wrap it up, but before uh, I let you guys go, I need each of you to share a casting story, whether it's really good or a casting nightmare. Obviously, the nightmare is way more entertaining, so if you want to share that one, I definitely want to push you towards that one. I have a casting silliness. All right, perfect. <laughs> I was casting a movie where one of the boys was buying a gun from an unknown entity and in the middle of the casting the guy who was an older man who's selling him the gun brings out a orange plastic <laughs> um, water pistol and they're doing this very serious I'm going to use my comb here by the way but yeah this very serious scene with this orange water pistol in their hand and I just couldn't stop laughing and the director looked at me and we were both cracking up but trying to keep it together because these four actors had learnt this hugely long scene and all we could think about was this orange water pistol and my head was does he have a son did he go into the pound shop to buy the water pistol before he came here where did he get it about everything except the scene so so maybe the note here is props let the casting directors provide them don't bring your own yeah yeah i mean if you have to use something because you feel like you need to be playing with something a pen or you know your phone is always good because we know you've got one with you but nothing that's going to distract and make my brain go oh i'm a bit bored now i'm going to have a little my own little fantasy about where this water pistol came from <laughs> Um, okay, I did a casting you? recently, um, and I just spent the whole morning laughing. It was just bizarre. Um, it was a foreign commercial. Always foreign commercials were a bit nuts, which we love, a bit crazy. But I had to get guys that had bellies, and they had to sort of squidge their bellies in and talk, make their bellies talk. Ooh. Yeah, it was really interesting. And obviously some of the guys came in and were like, oh, I didn't know about this. And they're picking fluff out of their belly about beforehand. And, but just seeing guys with very large bellies squidging them together and making noises. So they were talking to their belly and using sort of creasing their belly over so they could be lips. I mean, it, it was just bizarre. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I didn't stop laughing for a few hours. But so there's, I got to talented bellies out there some people couldn't do it at all it was really interesting so you could probably just go to the beach and scout for that talent couldn't you not when you get you know because they were talking to their bellies so not everyone's happy to talk to <laughs> their belly, everyone are they? To act with the belly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fair enough. Shakira, Kate, thank you so much for joining me today and talking about uh, Zoom auditioning and self-taping. I really appreciate your time. You guys have been wonderful. Uh, do you have any final notes that you'd want to send out to our audience? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, thank you for asking us. It's been a yeah. pleasure. And, you know, it's just good to sort of get actors thinking, you know, about backgrounds, eyelines, all those sorts of things. They're really important. Um, so, you know, I just hope people have taken away some good advice from what we said today. Kira's on mute because her dog is barking. unmuted. Sorry, there I there we go. <laughs> decided to have a, a, a talk with somebody outside in the garden. Um, yeah, no, it's been great to speak to you, and yeah, I think it's all changing, but we're we just embracing the new, really, because yeah. things are starting to move. So it's all quite positive. Overall, very positive message moving forward. I think everyone is going to get back to not normal, but a new normal. Um, so I think it's a really positive thing for everybody. So thank you guys so much. Stay on the line. We're going to end the Facebook session. Thank you, everybody in the audience today for joining us. Uh, I hope you gained some insight from this. I certainly did. Uh, and yeah, look forward to the next one.